Drawing inside the lines can be hard to do. Ask any longtime Photoshop user, and they'll tell you that good craftsmanship is directly tied to understanding masking. So what is masking? In this video, I'll introduce the core principles of making masks. To start with, we'll take a look at this real-world example. If you've ever worked with watercolor paints or acrylic painting on paper, you probably started by laying down masking tape to define the borders of the image. First you paint a while, and then when you're finished, you lift up the tape, like so. Now what you're left with is a nice clean border. Now there's a reason that this tape is called masking tape. The act of blocking off portions of the drawing surface in order to keep them clean is known as masking. So in a very real way, the masking tape helps a watercolor painter stay inside the lines, or in this case, the boundaries of the painting. So where does Photoshop come in? Well, Photoshop is the king of masking. The concept is deep, and most artists have their own approach, but I'll begin with the basics. The most basic masking tools in the tool palette are the marquee and the lasso. I'll reproduce the masking tape example here by using the most basic, the rectangular marquee. All I do is I draw a box, and then Photoshop limits the area that I can paint to the boundaries of that box. So what you might be wondering at this point is, isn't that called a selection? Well, it is. The words selection and mask are often synonymous in Photoshop, and I might be using them interchangeably. They do differ in one key aspect, though, so let's take a look. So first I'll show a selection. Using the Marquee tool, I'll draw a rectangle on this layer that already has a painting on it. If I paint with the brush, I'll be limited to painting only inside of that area, just like the masking tape. Now what you'll notice is that the rest of the painting outside of that marquee is still visible. This is because it's a marquee and not a mask. So if instead I were to make that same marquee, but then turn it into a mask by clicking the Add New Layer Mask button, it actually hides everything else that's outside of that selection. So it's still there, but it's hidden by the mask. So it has the same effect where I can only paint inside of the lines, but in this case it also hides extra content. So there's one final point I want to hit on regarding making new masks. You might have noticed that when I clicked the Add Layer Mask button, an additional thumbnail image popped up on this layer. It's black and white. Now this is a little indicator of where the mask is covering. So if you look at the thumbnail, the black area is what's being protected. This can be thought of as the masking tape. The white area is where I can paint. So it can take a little while to wrap your head around this idea, but get used to seeing these mask indicator thumbnails and know that the white area is the active area and the black is where you can't paint. Masks are 100% essential for digital painting, but beginners often avoid the concept because it can seem abstract and unapproachable. With this in mind, in the coming weeks, I'll be revisiting the concept and I'll discuss how to apply it into your paintings. So stay tuned.